Hi photography students, today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite tools and that's the clone stamp tool. It's found over here on your toolbar, it's also letter S, just the S by itself. And I'm going to click on that tool and it looks like a little rubber stamper you would use to maybe stamp the date onto something. Uh, as you can see as I move my cursor around the screen, it's very small. The default size for the brush is 13 pixels big. So the first thing I want to do is right click and select a larger brush. I'll start at 200 pixels and that should be um, a good size brush to work with. The other default here in this tool is aligned, which means that um, every time I use the tool, it's going to go back to its source point over and over again. Um, and that can be kind of problematic when you're trying to uh, use the tool really carefully. So I suggest unchecking aligned before you get started. Um, normal mode will be fine, 100% is fine. There's always could be times in the future where you might adjust the opacity. I'm going to duplicate this lock background so that I can work on the top copy and we can see what I'm doing. I'll zoom in on this sharp marker and the whole idea of making a clone of something is to make an exact copy. So the first thing I'll do is come to the edge of the sharpie and press and hold alt on the keyboard and my cursor the tool has changed into a little bullseye and wherever I click with my mouse, I have now selected the edge of that marker. If I came here and hit Alt and clicked, now I've selected the scissors. So you want to think about what source point are you taking. And then when I start to paint, I can go right down the length of the marker and I've now cloned an exact copy. So here's without it and here's with it. So I'm limited to where I can put this and what angle and everything because it's taking an exact copy, but I, it's kind of cool to be able to instantly duplicate something. So that's how you would use the clone tool to add something to your photo. It can also be used to take something away. So for example, if I came in on the cover of my notebook here, uh, I'm going to make the brush a little smaller. Uh, if I select just this white background area, I can start to clone, and here I'm, I'm clicking the, the uh, cursor a lot to select that source point a few times. And now I'm kind of at the point where I can just kind of paint. Um, I do want you to see this. If I, let's say I select here, I start to paint like this, I eventually could cross over into an area that I, I don't want to use. So wherever that little plus sign is, is what I'm painting with. So I'm kind of paying attention to where my brush is coming from. All right, so if I unclick the visibility here, now I just took the text off of that notebook, which could be really helpful if for some reason you had to take a, a brand name off of something. Like I said, you know, I don't have permission to put need on here. I'm going to take it out. All right, so the clone tool is really powerful and it's a great thing that you can use um, to make quick changes to an image, take something out or add something to it, but it's never a substitute for checking your background and moving something out of the way uh, when, you're, when you're working with your camera. Uh, when I'm done, I'll flatten this image because I, I did create another layer there and do file, save as. And right now it has the file name um, from the camera, the numbers, so I'm just going to get rid of that and change it to cloned and hit save. Um, bump up my JPEG options and click OK. So by changing the name, I can then reopen my original file. So here is the original file with one Sharpie and the text still on the notebook. And now here's my clone copy where it's been duplicated and removed.